Test, test. Hello. Well, hey, thanks for joining me in this freezing cold war room or wherever you are on the internet. Um, I'm going to talk about Mac and Pearl. I'm Mark Fowler. I've, uh, I'm a London Pearl Mungo alum. I've lived in the States for two years and I've been speaking at Pearl conferences since uh, t uh, the year 2000. And actually, I previously spoke on this topic in 2011 and at the London Pearl Workshop, and you can find the video for that online on YouTube. And it, I covered a whole bunch of stuff, but that's not a prerequisite for this talk, because basically that's all old hat. Um, uh, it's now 2014, and I'm going to be talking about some, some new stuff, some new technology, some new shiny in this talk. And I'm briefly going to be covering these points here, which I'll get to in a second. But the thing to know is that I'm going to cover them very quickly, because this is a 20-minute talk. And I'm going to put code up on the screen. And I'm not going to give you time to read it. I'm just going to give you a brief <coughs> overview of what it does. And you can look at the slides later. If you want to find the slides, they are linked from the uh, uh, conference schedule. If you click on the talk, you can, click, you can find the slide link from there. So diving straight in, let me talk to you about the system Perl on Mac OS X. So back in 2011, we had to make a decision between the system Perl and installing modules directly into there. We had system Perl and installing local lib or fat, or fat lib or something like that, or using Perl Brew to install a completely new Perl. Now, the system Perl is a bad idea because Apple have a habit of breaking modules that you install inside there. So basically, we have a, to make a choice between these two here. Here's a handy graph which shows how things have been changing since 2011. This graph represents the age of the major version of Perl at the time the operating system shipped. And you can see back in 2011 here, we were at eight years. Then we were down to three years. And now this blue line here, this two year, is the current cutoff support from Perl 5 porters. So we can actually see that we've got a one year old version in the current version of, uh, of Mac OS X. And in the preview version, which is currently uh, in beta. We have 5.18, which is less than a year old, or just over a year old now. So that's all good news. So while in 2011, I may have said something like, build your own Pearl, Pearl Brew, your Pearl, is, your Pearl is old, it's dead, it's no longer supported. Now I'm saying, ex when you're doing extensions, which you're going to share with other people, you're going to set up your Mac and uh, pass on um, extensions to third parties, you can use the system Pearl quite happily. Uh, probably want to use Perl Brew for your own development, Perl, if you're doing development work, which you're doing otherwise there, so to get, you can install 520 or have non-threaded or different things or something like that. But normally, local lib or fat lib is OK now, which is a major update since my 2011 talk. But let's talk about something fun and exciting instead of version numbers. Let's talk about Alfred 2. Now, Alfred 2 is a launcher application. It's commercial. You can buy it. It's not very much money. Um, uh, there are other launchers available, Spotlight, Quicksilver, and Launchbar. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about Alfred 2. And why am I going to talk to you about Alfred 2 as opposed to those? Uh, basically, because I think Alfred 2 integrates best with Perl. So what is a launcher? Well, here's my machine. I hit Command Space or whatever keyboard shortcut I have, and up pops a little dialog box, and I can type into it things. And as I type, it filters based on both what I'm typing and the most recent things I've selected. So I'm typing Chrome here, and it's, you can see it's filtered down to choosing between Chrome or opening Chromatic in my contacts. And I, I can move up and down, and I, and I, can, I can hit Return, and it launches it. Now, if it was an application, it would open that application. If it's a script, it's going to run the script. And in this case, it launched Chrome. So great. That's, what can we do with this with Perl? Well, we can add our own extensions to this. And those extensions can be written in Perl. And we're going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you about uh, writing an extension that uh, searches meta CPAN. So we would type CPAN and would hit space. And then when we started typing, we would start searching meta CPAN for a, the module that we're typing. So I type data, and I, type, and I get to dumper. I move down, and I, click, I hit return, and up pops the documentation. Now, you could use a similar thing to pass arguments to a script. So you could have uh, auto-completing options on scripts and so on and so forth, and any extension your heart desires. But this is a good example. So let's see how that's done. So these extensions can be created using this kind of GUI editor that's part of Alfred. And you basically get boxes and connect them together. So we have a script here 
which feeds its, uh, its output over to an action. In this case, the action is to open the URL, which the script gen, which the, comes out of you running the script. So inside the script, when we click, we get another GUI kind of box up here, which gives you something really small that no one at the back can see. But um, the all important thing is here. This is where we select our language, and of course, we're going to select Perl, the system Perl. And then we enter the script into this box, well, at least some of it. Um, the majority of the script is actually contained in this script.pl. So each one of these extensions has its own workflow, uh, just here, the workflow folder. Um, contains a little folder which ships with the script, and inside there is the majority of my script, so I can use version control and all of those things. Um, up here is a directive saying to use fatlib. Now, as I said, we're running on the system Perl, so none of my normal modules are installed there. Um, so we, I package up all my dependencies with app fatpacker and stick them in a fatlib directory, and I can ship them with extension. I can just hand this extension to someone else, and they don't need anything special installed on their system apart from Alfred, and they can use it. Uh, and then here's a last section of this, of this boilerplate code at the beginning, which is how the uh, um, arguments that I'm typing get put into the program. So Alfred substitutes the text that you're typing directly into the source code. Whenever it sees these curly braces, this curly query, it sticks the text in there. Now this is Perl, so I, it's very hard to create something that I can't escape with quotes or commas or something. In this example, it's not so bad because you're just searching CPAN, but you can imagine you're going to end up with some accidentally executing Perl code if you're not careful. So here I'm using a here doc, and unless someone can guess this GUID, no, it's a 128-bit number, so it's a big space, they're not going to get through. Uh, so yeah, stick whatever we want, nothing can escape. Great. So let's go and look at what's inside, what this script is doing. This script has to output a load of XML in Alfred special formats, but let's not worry about that because I wrote a module to do that uh, using um, XML Easy, which is a Perl module which is capable of creating uh, XML valid and parsing XML in pure Perl, uh, though it does have a C version if you want speed. Um, anyway, this example here prints Rod, Jane, and Freddy out, and that would basically give me one on top of the other, Rod, Jane, Freddy, as my listed options. And you can do stuff more complicated, so I can have a title, I can have a little text underneath Rod, or in this case, I'm, I'm saying Star Wars and Star Wars Episode V, and underneath I can say New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. And I'm providing an argument to say which will be passed forward in this. So in the Meta CPEN example, we're using it to pass forward the URL of what we're actually searching for. And there's a UID. And by assigning each, ones of these, each of these a UID, I'm saying that uh, if you have an equal, if someone types star, for example, in this task, they have an equal chance of star or star wars, and the one that you select the most often is the one that's listed first, and that's tracked by the UID. So anyway, this highly dense code here is the entire script to search meta CPAN, and just to show how briefly quick it is, uh, that is an LWP request to the API, which returns back JSON. Uh, this is me parsing the JSON and doing a map, and then that's me chucking it into the uh, routine which generates the XML. And that's pretty much it. So the only last thing is this on this GUI section, just <laughs> configuring to say, open the URL. And this time we've got the query at the end of the URL which is going to be substituted in. And that's pretty much everything there is to write an extension in, um, in Alfred. And you can go check that out on GitHub and have a look and play around and modify it to your heart's content. So, moving quickly on as we're short on time, let's talk about Keyboard Maestro. Actually, let's not. Let's go take a quick aside and go back to talking about keyboard, Text Expander, so which is a topic I discussed in 2011. So, Text Expander is a utility that monitors what I'm typing. So, say I type meta Q Q, and as I hit the second Q, it deletes what I just typed and puts in the output of a Perl script. So I have a Perl script which uses Appy Meta Syntactic to replace Meta QQ with print standard error Batman sound effect. And this is so I don't have to go through my code when I'm doing the poor man's debugger. Print, I'm here, I'm here. Print, I'm here. No, no, print, I'm here now. I just go through and write Meta QQ, down, down, Meta QQ, down, down, Meta QQ. And each time I type Meta QQ, I get a different Batman sound effect. Very handy. Um, and this is basically what it looks like. It's just a tiny little uh, script. So as you can see, I'm going to point on the screen now. You, meta QQ down here is what I'm typing. And this is the script up here. 
and it's in the, clicking on the content at the top lets me set if it's a plain string or a shell script, and this is a shell script which runs my pill, pill, pill and prints out metasyntactic. Excellent. So let's, that was, that's what I talked about previously. Let's talk about Keyboard Maestro. So Keyboard Maestro is a more complicated and therefore harder to use version of this with many, many more bells and whistles. Um, so what can Keyboard Maestro do that Text Expander can't? What's worth installing another package which is slightly harder to use? Well, it can do regex triggers. So um, here's an example of uh, a regex based trigger. Here's the regex, hence some digits QQ. That um, runs uh, this program. So you have this kind of GUI programming language in Keyboard Maestro. And in this case, I'm setting the variable what was typed to the trigger value. And then I have a Perl script down here. And that variable has been stuck, uh, can be accessed from within this Perl script, which I am executing inside an environment variable. And what this is doing is doing some date time manipulation to create some text which, replace, which is dependent on the number I, I typed in. So in a week, it'll be hence 7QQ. And it inserts the date seven days from now. But I could type 14 or 28 or 365. Well, that's probably not very exciting. But you, you get what I'm doing. So you can imagine this is, so you can have arbitrarily complicated arguments parts into your script as part of this trigger that you're monitoring. Um, in other things, I have examples. I have, I can do hash hash QQ or, or um, equals equals QQ for comment, for drawing lines with comments. But on the, um, I have an, I can do arbitrary one by typing com some string QQ. Uh, this, uh, you can also set up basic hotkey triggers. So uh, here's an example of me hitting command control alt L. And it's, my Mac will tell me how long it is until Christmas using time du duration, which will give me um, a nice human readable string like 300 days, four hours, or so forth, and, or hours and minutes if, when we get closer. Yeah. Oh. So user interface and full flow control. So I've just been showing you basic examples of what Keyboard Maestro can do. But I can write almost an entire application in here. So um, here's a guess my number game. Uh, you guess a number between 1 and 100, so I'm guessing 50. And it tells me. Here, my guess is too low, and pops up another dialog. And I type in a new guess. It says it's too high, it's too low, it's too high, it's too low. Oh, I got it. So there's a complicated application. It's throwing, up, it's throwing up a GUI that I can control. And it's doing complicated flow control inside here. And this is basically a bunch of little Perl scripts tied together. So up here, in some really small text, is me just getting a number and sticking, generating a sticky in a variable. This is me guessing, and you can see there's this, this kind of while loop going on over here to do the guessing. And a shell script down here, which is doing, generating the string to work out that based on the contents of the environment variables that we have set previously. But we can do other things with it. We can manipulate the browser. We can manipulate windows. We can play music. We can write to files. So you could append output to files, uh, bring files in, make web requests alter the clipboard. So basically, you can script almost your entire map. You can move the mouse. You can click the mouse. You can move windows. You can, the list goes on. It does a lot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How does this minute, uh, tie in with Perl? Well, we've already seen we can use it to have little Perl scripts embedded in it. But we also have a Perl module that we can use to trigger these macros from Perl. So I, um, I could, for example, use KM macro to trigger how long it is until Christmas. And there's a get and set method. So I can, I can use keyboard mouse to set, uh, uh, set to set these envi uh, um, envi the variables that are passed back. So when you're triggered into a, a Perl Maestro script, you can set arbitrary number of variables back that can be accessed elsewhere, not just have to return something. Uh, the best place to look for this is looking on CPAN, my modules on there, it, Mac Keyboard Maestro. OK. The third thing I wanted to talk to you, a fourth thing I wanted to talk to you about is PopClip. But before I do that, I'm going to take another aside and talk to you about services, which is something I talked about in 2011. So they're an inbuilt part of Mac OS X, and they can do one of three things. They can in, in, do something with the text which is selected. They can insert new text at the cursor, or they can manipulate and replace the selected text. Um, here's an example. Leon loves moose. 
he does. Um, and going into my services option, there's, um, my, the Unicode checker application on my, on my Mac provides a service which encodes um, code to HTML entities. So if I go and select that, all of my text uh, gets turned into ASCII Unicode um, HTML entities. You can write these with Perl. So here's a really basic service in Perl. This takes whatever text that you pass in, have selected, and replaces it with the output of it evaluating that text. So uh, this can be set up with a program. This can be set up with a program called This Service, which can create this. I'm saying this one takes input, <laughs> produces output, and uh, test it. So one, two, three, and when I test the service, I get six, because that's how Perl works. I can then say install it, and then there's a little ticky box inside your keyboard setup to say, I want to enable this. I want to enable, evaluate, and print. So foo times, uh, foo times one, two, three, well, if you multiply by the x operator times one, two, three, gives me run through the evaluate and print as Perl expression service, gives me foo, 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 foo. Excellent. Um, but I was going to talk to you about PopClip. Well, I like to think of PopClip as, pop as visual services. So for my birthday, I would like a new iPad mini retina. Oh, awesome. Um, bit long, that URL. So if you select it, you get this little pop-up here once you've installed PopClip. It's five bucks from the Apple Store. Uh, and if I select the shorten link button, it thinks for a bit and then shortens the link. Excellent. PopClip has a, can, also has an extension, and they can be written in Perl. So let's write one now. So this is a common situation. I want to write, I run a Perl script, and it doesn't work. This happens all the time because I'm not that clever. Um, in this case, I've mistyped say, and I've got, a, I've got a line up here that says broken PL line seven. So I highlight it, and I've, I, one of my custom extensions is this do, dollar at one right at the end here. So I click on it, and it pops open my editor and moves my cursor to the right line. So it's kind of like having an IDE without actually having an IDE. How does that work? Well, it's an extension written in Perl. Popclip extensions are basically funnily named direction, directories. They have this dot popclip uh, extension at the end of it. And they have three, three or more, typically three or more files in it. The key of these is the config.plist file, which is a bunch of XML uh, in a plist format, which is Apple speak for really complicated JSON. Um, you need to give it a unique identifier, reverse DNS style So to, in my case, it's common two short planks, pop clip, ex, pop clip, Perl er, error sublime. Uh, you know, you can give it a title. Uh, you give it a, the name of the logo you want to put on it, so give it that dollar at. Uh, the, the script file we want to run, and of course, the interpreter, Perl, we want to run it with. Oh, and a regular expression. So I don't always want this to pop up when I select any text. I only want it to select up if, it's, if the text contains at something, line, something. Doesn't work with file names with spaces in it, but who does that? That's crazy. Um, so, oh, and my logo. Uh, this is just a PNG, which is monochrome, transparent background, 256 by 256, or bigger. And my script. And this is essentially the script, or some of it. The key thing is that the extension text is just passed in via this environment. The selected text is passed in via the environment variable, at which point I can parse it with a regular expression, break it out so I know the path, the line number, and I can use find the sibl command on my system, which launches my editor if I pass in the path and line number argument. And that's pretty much it to writing a pop clip extension. Or it would be, except my particular example is a bit more complicated, and I wanted to show something about that so you understand a bit more about scripting your Mac and making it better. So here's the problem. Um, broken.pl is inside my temp directory, but the selected text only doesn't tell me that. I have to know what to my term, the current working directory of my terminal is. So there's a terminal uh, underscore CWD function I wrote, which contains a lot of code, which I'm sure you can all read now. <laughs> no, no, OK, let me just give you that, the 3,000 feet view of that. Uh, there's some script which runs some Apple script using the OS scripts shell to uh, look at my terminal and find the TTY. There's, uh, a, so that's using some Apple script. Then there's a process that I run that uses PS to extract the, uh, the uh, relevant information from that for, that for the TTY. 
Then there's some Perl code that, so I've used, Perl, I've used off script, uh, uh, Apple Script, I've used um, a process. Now I'm using some Perl code to tie all that together. And then I'm using another command to use LSOF to work out the working directory for that process. Huh. And this is typical. I've used Apple Script, Perl code, external programs, and I've tied them all together. It was very common when you're scripting in something like a Mac. But Perl is a glue language after all. So that was my 20 minutes thing. I've got one minute left. Oh, available on GitHub. I've got one minute left to talk about 2015, uh, which, um, so coming soon. Uh, Keyboard Maestro recently added an ability to programmatically add and manipulate macros installed on it, which gives the ability to, to do meta programming with Keyboard Maestro from Perl, which is awesome. Um, there's a new Apple Script replacement called JavaScript for Automation, which is basically JavaScript instead of Apple Script in Yosemite, which is going to produce interesting stuff. And there's a new programming language called Swift, which having a brief look at should make calling Perl processes simpler from Cocoa apps, so we can move more into the, the uh, higher space there. I don't think I actually have time for questions, but if you want to, um, well, I'm happy for people to leave for lunch, but if anybody wants to ask any questions, because I've run through 100 miles an hour, you can do so. We can have time, but I won't be offended if anybody wants to run out and rush off to go and get something to eat. I have plans. So any questions? No, awesome. Oh, yes. OK, so um, the question is, how much do you have to pay for this? Uh, Sublime is about $5. Uh, Alfred is about 10 pounds, I think. I can't remember. Alfred is free, but if you want the power pack, it's going to be expensive. Yeah, if you want to have the extensions and control it from Perl, that's going to be some money. I've forgotten how much it is in dollars. Um, Sublime text is kind of free, kind of not. The beta version is free. The paid, for ver the paid version is not. But I, I haven't really talked about scripting with Sublime text. Um, and Keyboard Maestro is about $30, but normally you can find it cheaper on a collection. Uh, on a collection. So, so yes, we are using certain co um, uh, commercial software to make all of this fun. But you're using a Mac, right? If you wanted free software, you'd be using Linux. <laughs> Thank you for listening.